Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome to a brand new Fallout 76 camp build. And this week we have a new building set available in the Atomic Shop that I have quite happily picked up. I thought we'd go quite well with an idea I had anyway, so let's put those two things together, shall we? Okay, so yeah, we have the destroyed building set that's been added this week on the Atomic Shop. It's um, an odd set. I'm not quite sure how I feel about it, but I thought I'd give it a go for this Hunter's Shack idea that I had. So it's worked out quite well. It's uh, an interesting thing and it encourages a lot of decoration, which is cool as well. So let's have a look at where we are on the map all the way down in the Cranberry Bog today. I thought we'd do something a little different and go for uh, one of the areas with some trees around the Cranberry Bog. So as you see the flooded train yard over there and cranberry glade there drop site v9 is just off to the south of us i think we're just far enough north to avoid getting nuked here unless somebody goes crazy but uh, should be all right so definitely uh, a bit of a different spot to the usual vibe and uh, a change from building hunter shacks in the forest which would be the normal way of doing it so let's have a look at this spot okay so i've got a couple of foundations in already i meant to only have the one but apparently i forgot to take the two at the back out as well so the main core of this is going to be a 2x2. Two two. It's going to be a very small little structure, which always makes for more intensive decoration, but uh, came out quite well for this little sort of destroyed shack vibe. So here's the new set. It's clearly a, a variation on the Haunted House set. It's got the same windows, same door on it, but with a, a destroyed reskin. And it's quite cool, though I think it does need uh, sort of a little work to really make it sort of homely. So, with the front few walls in there, first thing I'm going to do here is get this corner roof on, because I want it to be lower than the rest of the roof. So, in order to get these slanted walls in, I need to do this first. Build order is reasonably important in this little structure, so something to bear in mind. So with that in, we can move on a little bit. We're going to use the new stair set from this particular set, once I turn the door around. This is only a temporary thing, but uh, you can have a look at it while I'm sort of putting an upper floor in. Because the idea here is that I want to put a couple of railings in, which I'll need to do before I put the final staircase in. Of course, before I do that, I'm going to have to get this upper floor in, and uh, apparently it's not cooperating today. Come on, there we go. So we'll run that just around here. So I want two railings in around this sort of lower section of roof that we've already established. However, once we grab those railings, we'll see that we can't actually put them in place because the roof's blocking it, naturally. So we'll have to break out the flamethrower trap. In this particular build, I got quite a lot of use of Flamethrower Trap. Don't mind the Maya Luck Queen in the background there. And um, yeah, I had to use this Flamethrower Trap a lot because basically, because it's such a small structure, squeezing things in close together was uh, a frequent challenge. So with that done, and with both of these, well, all three of these pieces destroyed, we can now snap these railings in. Here we go. Nice, now we can repair that. And it doesn't leave a particularly large gap there, but I did want it to be at least partially open. I mean, you wouldn't fall down it anyway without those railings in, but it didn't feel complete without, so... There we go. Now we can take the extra floors out and carry on. So I'm just going to use the plain walls now, we'll figure out where I want the windows in a bit. And now those are in, we'll grab a staircase. I'm going to use this frame one because it was such a small build, I can't really use the one that came with the set as it requires a bit more room. So we'll just head on up. Now we've got that staircase in, we can get some upper walls in. I'm just going to use half walls here. You know me, I don't like to use tall upper stories. Personally, I still think it looks a bit weird. <laughs> so there we go. We can take that staircase out. We don't need it anymore. And now we can drop the roofs in. And for these, I'm using the haunted house roofs because they go quite well with this set, as you can imagine. Quite like the wooden shingles on these, so uh, definitely works nicely. So that's the core structure. Got a few more bits to do. Let's get that spare foundation out of the way, now we don't need it anymore. And this set includes its own porch as well, as quite a few of them have done recently. Obviously equally battered as everything else, it's quite cool. And have a play around with these so you can get a quick look at them, but I'm basically going to settle on this plain one. For this sort of section of the video, I actually only put this one porch piece over the doorway here, but uh, in decoration I actually ran it around the corner to the right here, having three all together, so I had somewhere to put my uh, crafting benches. And it also changes the shape of the structure a little bit, which is always a win. Makes it a bit more interesting to the eye. And there we go. For now, that will do. Let's start dressing this up a little bit. That high window there, I don't really want the reverse junk fence over that. So we'll put a few around the sides here. And I'll have to take some out in a bit just to uh, put windows in once I figure out where I want those. But basically, we're just going to drop these next to it and then carefully manoeuvre them so they are nice and snug with the wall. 
just to kind of shore up some of those walls and fill up some of those holes a bit. I actually went kind of crazy in the decoration phase at plugging the holes. If somebody's going to move into a destroyed building, they're probably going to want to reduce the draft as much as possible, so we'll have a talk about that in just a moment. For now, I'm going to swap over these two walls in the back corners, two windows, and that should basically complete the structure and be time to move on to the decorated tour. Okay, several hours of decoration later, we have a very, very ramshackle, slightly disturbing hunter's shack down in the Cranberry Bog. I quite like how this has come out. It looks really beaten up and ramshackle and like it's been repaired post-war, and I'm quite happy with how that's come out. Loads of decoration on the outside. As you can see, I've used lots and lots of signs and boards and things like that. I've avoided paper posters, but I've tried to go for things that look like they might be a bit more weather-resistant, I suppose a bit more solid so that's what I've gone for on um, the walls here just to pluck up all the gaps here and there so the idea obviously is that as much as possible we'll close up the gaps you can really go crazy with it this build's actually only used about half of the budget so I could have kept on going although it is already starting to hit the frame rate a little bit so swings around about I suppose but yeah solid objects solid wall decor like this cover up the gaps quite nicely and try and block out some of the uh, draft that is probably still going to be blowing through but it's quite a cool look. Got some of the window boards from the old Halloween set up there as well. Didn't want to have too many of those because they kind of stick out and they look a bit odd and like they're just stuck on the side, which makes sense for the signs, but less so for the boards, I feel. So, mixing everything up, keeping the variety going on. So, heading around here, we have a shower out the back, tucked a flag in, and you can see the porch, the patio thing, is just running around the corner there. Rather than sealing up the railings that it comes with, I decided to use junk walls and chain link fences to give it that really scrappy ramshackle look. Works quite nicely and gives us a little bit of space, as I say, to put the crafting benches in as well. Whole oh, loads of bit of hunter-type decoration out there, stuff from Moonshine Jamboree and a couple of Mothman bits and pieces to get that kind of, this person is a crazy hunter vibe. So uh, I think that's come out okay. Put a few extra trees around just to draw the kind of trees in the area a bit in towards the actual shack. But um, unfortunately, that does bulldoze a lot of the grass, which is kind of annoying. So I dropped a load of the brambles in to kind of replace some of that. There we go. Let's head on inside, shall we? Oh, I've got my vendor just outside by the door here. I do like using those uh, cash register vendors because they just tuck in a little space, nice and easy. You can get access to them quick and easy, and uh, it just sort of blends in with the larger decoration quite nicely. A worm farm out there. We've got a staircase snapped onto the edge of the foundation here, the porch foundation. So things have a habit of snapping down through the earth onto that staircase. So I decided to embrace that and put some plants on it so they actually look like they're growing out of the earth. And it's worked fairly well. Quite like that. So heading on to the porch here, we've got some bone charms to add a little bit more detail. I actually remember the fireflies in a jar for once, so nice to get those used as well, even if they don't put out much light. We'll have a look at the crafting area. Speaking of light, incidentally, this build I decided uh, to go for no power here, so uh, things like the decon arch and stuff down in the shelter if I need that, but for everything else it's lanterns and stuff like that, just to kind of keep that found post-war and uh, nailed anything they could to restore its vibe, you know? And uh, I think it works reasonably well. Yeah, nice and busy. Let's head on inside. So this particular new building set actually comes with its own door, which is a chain link door, kind of a really broken up chain link door. It's really, really cool, but I didn't think it would work for this particular style of build. So I went for the outhouse door, because I felt that did work better. So heading on inside, a little one room down here. I'll close that door, unfortunately it does clip through the table, but we can't have everything, I suppose. Loads of stuffed animal heads and creature heads, going for a uh, slightly crazy hunter vibe, which is what I wanted for this. Don't usually use the bearskin rug either because it sticks up so much, I'm not really a big fan of it. But uh, in this particular build, it seemed to make sense. I thought I'd make use of that uh, Mothman chandelier there that we picked up a couple of weeks ago. So I really like that thing and it goes quite well in this build. Had to rug glitch that sofa in under the stairs. You could have blueprinted it and got it in that way, but it was just a bit easier and faster with the rug glitch. So that worked quite well. The lot of stuff to get it all so close together in here did have to make a point of using the flamethrower quite a bit. Now, yep, more mounted animal heads on the wall in the kitchen area, and we've got some weapons on the wall as well. Decided to use the chem station and the brewing station and stuff in the kitchen here, just to give it that kind of, well, meth lab vibe, I guess. <laughs> but it certainly works. 
You can see a little gap up to the upper floor there. Really is little, but uh, it's there. And that's what matters. <laughs> yeah, a few bits of decoration on the surfaces as well. I thought about using the merge trick to kind of put stuff on the shelves and stuff, but I thought that might be a bit over the top for this build, so kept it a bit more light in some areas. Do like the idea of having uh, mounted animal heads so they look like they're coming in through the windows. I thought boarding the windows up as they obviously don't have any glass in them would be the way to go. Keep the breeze down. So let's head on upstairs. Just to light the stairway, put a couple of lanterns on the steps there. Don't get in the way and stop you travelling up, so that's always cool. And uh, illuminates the room below and kind of the staircase as well, which is quite a nice effect. Just a few little bits and pieces up around the staircase here, because there's not a lot of room to path around. One of the drawbacks to this particular building set, I should say, is that you can't actually wallpaper it. Which kind of makes sense, wallpaper's probably only got one side to it, so you'd see the, the non-existent back of it from the outside. And if it's destroyed, it wouldn't look right with wallpaper on it anyway inside, so it kind of makes sense. But it does mean sometimes when you put things on the wall, because of the shape of the collision box, things look a bit like they're floating, which is sometimes avoidable, sometimes not, so... Bit of a drawback there, but if you really want that beaten up look, the set does that very well. Little bedroom in the corner, kept it reasonably spartan and um, sort of basic looking, hence the sleeping bag on the dirty mattress. Put a few plushies in, because we haven't really got a lot of suitable bedroom decoration other than the plushies, and the lever action rifle as well. I would have liked to have longer, like, severed heads and stuff like that in jars, which I've got some of downstairs, but we've only got the one available really, and we need a, a mixture if I'm going to decorate a bedroom with it. It would have been ideal for this weird build, but uh, for now, we'll just stick with the plushies. Drop the barbed wire fence from the Hunt from the Treasure Hunter event around the stairs here. I was going to use chain link, but it didn't want to go in, probably because of the roof, and I also noticed it would have clipped down through the floor and been visible below in a way that wasn't really working for me. So I went with the barbed wire, as that kind of works in this weird build anyway. It's uh, very odd and mix the match kind of vibe so it quite works for that let's head down these very steep stairs have one last look around the ground floor yeah i like using the um the door there the outhouse door it's slightly ridiculous but that kind of works for this build and uh, the color contrast works nicely as well with the rest of the walls and obviously being old half rotten wood it fits in with the rest of the vibe too which is quite cool a couple of grognak signs around there, the King Grognak signs, as they've got skulls on them. I felt it kept the, the vibe of the rest of the build going as well. And there we go, one little Cranberry Bog Hunter Shack. There are a few places around with little clusters of trees sort of over on this side of the Cranberry Bog that make for kind of cool places to tuck little camps in. But uh, you have to avoid the nukes, obviously. And the initial place I actually looked at was a lot less flat than this, which is why I moved over here, but um, I didn't want too much foundation sticking up on this build. But it came out quite nicely. We've got a nice big flat area here, actually. It's quite good for that. And no uh, trenches, so there's a win too. So, I hope you folks did enjoy this video. If you did, please do consider dropping subs and likes. I do very, very much appreciate it. Down below the video as well, you can find social media links, merch store, and channel memberships. If you're interested in supporting the channel in that way, I hugely appreciate it. It really, really helps out. So, massive thank you to everyone who's done that. And if you get a chance, do join us for live streams as well. We are, of course, playing 76, and we're playing The Witcher 2 as well at the moment, which has been good fun, so I do hope we'll be seeing you there. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.